Hi, I'm Lana and this is Leanne and we're Designers for Life and today we're going to talk about neutral paint colors. Actually, thanks to Sarah for commenting below and giving us this idea. Sarah, this one's for you. Before we get started on that, before we talk about neutrals, let's talk about color. My lips. We had some great <laughs> feedback from none other than Bev. My mom. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank, Thank you, you mom. for your comment. Who said that I needed to wear a little bit brighter lipstick, so I went the brightest. This is Melted Matte from Too Faced. So if you like bright. And it looks so good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mom. So let's get right into the neutrals. There's three main categories for the neutrals. And today we're going to show you some neutrals. We're going to show you the grays. We're going to show you some beiges. And we're going to show you some whites when it comes to neutrals. They're all going to be kind of light because it's not 1995 anymore and mushroom is not a color that we're putting on walls. So when we say beige, we mean light and pretty, mm -hmm. and that's what's in style. It gives a real fresh feel. The neutrals are still popular. I mean, that's something that I don't think yeah. is ever gonna go it's never away. Gonna go away. It's so easy to work with, and yeah. these all really work well together. Well, what we're gonna start with then is the gray, the Wickham gray. So Wickham gray is the top one right here. It's a little bit blue, mm -hmm. um, so it gives a little bit of color. We find that if gray doesn't have any color, if it's just mixed yeah. with black and white, it looks like concrete. Mm -hmm. and you don't want concrete, gray, cold walls. Um, it just doesn't, it just sort of loses its life and it's it doesn't a little say anything. dull. Yeah. Yeah. Second gray here is also by Benjamin Moore, OC52, and it's Gray Owl. And this looks really good, I think, with the marbles. When you've got lots of whites and really strong grays, then this also has a slight blue undertone, but there is a brown undertone in here too. Yes, just to see the difference. Uh, Only can... a designer can see the difference for these. <laughs> yeah. You might be able to. This you even might tell. be able to see. I don't know, it's hard. There is a difference, trust the us. The blue versus the little bit more earthier. Our next category is the neutral beiges. So again, we're staying nice and light, but something pretty like this, which is cake batter from mm -hmm. Benjamin Moore. This is really good in our climate because it gives a little bit of a feeling of sunshine on the inside of the house when we have such gray days. The code for it is CSP215. Quite close to that on the scale is CSP245, which is stoneware. And you can just see it's a little bit lighter than the cake batter and it has a little bit more gray in it. And this is a nice neutral beige, but just a little bit less color for those of you that want to stay in the more white range. If your sofa or sectional are in a gray tone, then maybe you want to keep the, the walls warmer, warmer, but not yellow. And then stoneware might be a really good, a really good option for you. Okay. Our next category is the whites. Yes. For the whites, we've got two options here. So this one here is a Sherwin-Williams. It's called Marshmallow. So it's SW7001. Very subtle, sort of reddish brown undertone. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's it works actually really well also with grays. It's not super white. It does have some color to it. It's still considered it's pretty white. bright. Like compared yeah, to my is. shirt, which is kind of cream, yeah. it's like brighter white than that. Yeah, exactly. Um, and when we say Oh, uh, yeah. If we say it has a bit of a reddish brown undertone, it doesn't mean it's going to look reddish brown on your wall. <laughs> Nobody will walk in and be like, what's this reddish brown white that yeah, you have? <laughs> exactly. So don't be scared of it just because yes. that's what we're saying the undertone is. Even though these are some of our favorites, they may or may not work in your space. Also, when you're considering paint colors, and if you get one of those paint testers, don't just paint a tiny little piece on the wall. Paint the whole wall out, trim to trim, yeah. or side to side and paint it two coats. Yes. Otherwise, you're never gonna see what that actual undertone in your white is yeah. gonna look like. Sometimes I've done where mm -hmm. you can get a large piece of primed MDF, paint it in a, like the white white that just comes straight out of the can, and, and then primer. put your color over top of it, but leave a border of the mm -hmm. white primer, and then put lean that up against your wall, yes. and put it sort of against your different furnishings to look at it against, Great. because then that true white border will help you see the undertone that is in your whatever your neutral is. So the other white that we're looking at here is a Benjamin Moore color. It's uh, CC30 and it's called Oxford White. Again, it's a slightly off white. Yeah, it's like an antique white. Yeah. It's not stark. 
Yes. But it, as you can see from the paint chip, it looks pretty fresh and it looks bright. <laughs> Let's talk about our trims. If you're doing a lot of whites, mm -hmm. then one option is to just change your sheen. Go from an eggshell for your wall and go up to a semi-gloss for your trim. Keep it all the same color, just change the sheen. If you've got one of the grays or one of the neutral beiges, then you can go with a nice bright white trim. We love Decorator's White. CC20 from Benjamin Moore again. Thanks again, Sarah, for commenting below and making this idea come to life. These are our favorite neutrals. Thanks for watching and subscribe below if you want to see more videos.